Uh, Alexander Kramsch, uh, who is the co-organizer, and myself, we have had this idea for this session uh, when he was last in Prague. He used to be um, the, the tea um, editor at that time still, so we are both very active in the EAA. We sat there in Prague in the coffee and talked about this petrification idea and really sprang over, and from this, uh, this uh, session uh, comes about. And the other reason uh, why um, I took up this uh, topic actually, and uh, 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 that is uh, because I had a Marie Curie fellowship uh, to Newcastle University, and that is on um, early medieval um, stone architecture or the introduction of stone architecture in the early medieval period. And that very much uh, got me in this idea of petrification as a process. And my colleagues there were already using that um, um, term, and they were thinking in more theoretical terms than what I was used coming from Germany. And, but I developed, I think, the idea a bit further, or very wide, as you will see later on. And, um, and I'm very enthusiastic about that. Uh, now we can have a session here uh, to discuss that. Uh, already before this, um, some of us uh, have met in Newcastle for a workshop and have uh, addressed the topic for a whole day. Um, and some of the ideas there uh, flow into that. And I also have the possibility to speak about the topic uh, in a um, in a longer sense, uh, in a three-part seminar in Rome with students, and that also from this I got a lot of ideas uh, for the topic. So we have um, in the first block um, we have uh, all the speakers present, um, and we'll be able to to finish uh, uh, on time for the coffee break. Um, and uh, Christian Christiansen will join us a bit later. He, he has another meeting he has to attend. Um, and also the, the speakers from the second block are there, but we miss the last two ones that are in the program. That is uh, Dominic Maschek and uh, Sebastian Fürst. So we, have, uh, we uh, could finish half an hour earlier um, if we have normal discussion time. So our finishing uh, time would be rather 6 o'clock than 6.30. Right. Um, okay. I'll start now, right away, uh, with my presentation. I have given you uh, a definition of petrification in the very beginning, in the abstract of the, uh, of the session. Um, and that is something that is a very petrifying act in itself. So define something, define a new term to make it solid, to make it uh, like in a dictionary. Uh, maybe let's ha have a look uh, at it what, I, what, we, uh, what we gave out there. So process of consolidation and structuring in nature or in culture, in space or in time, <coughs> It leads to something more permanent, transgenerational, or even eternal, can be called petrification. This can be observed in material culture when more durable, heavier, and inorganic materials are used, but also in societies when social relations become more stable, hierarchical, and predefined. And I've asked you kind of to apply this definition, this idea, to very different topics, to very different periods. And I'll try to do it in a much more general way, because I think petrification and its opposite, if there is something that gets more durable, of course there is something, there must be a process that does exactly the opposite. And, um, I've coined the, the term liquefaction for this. <laughs> it's, we will, won't find it in a, in a dictionary, but that is uh, something I think we should feel free to if we, if we have new thoughts, if we observe new processes, if we want to do something new, then why not create a new term 
for that. But that is not the main topic of this session. I actually intend to do that in a later stage, maybe in a year or two years, that we could look at that process. And actually, what would be worth doing is also look at both processes in balance, um, how they actually happen at the same time. But as uh, archaeologists, we are very much on the petrifying side. We are very much on the side of matter. We are materialists. And uh, so I think um, this is the, the right way for us to start off with. So what is, what is, how would I, that is a very typical way to start a lecture. So have a lecture setting have a definition, and I actually should bring maybe Foucault or somebody <laughs> you know, that enhances and says, so if you are right, so you are in the tradition of, uh, uh, of university or of learning, and uh, people have been saying that before, so you can build up on that. Uh, and that is actually not the way I'm doing it so much. I, I, I did ignore some of this history, but I hope Alexander will do it very differently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will go into this history. Uh, but I think uh, petrification is something that is so obvious it's, and it's everywhere, that I cannot say it's just this person who maybe who coined the term. I wouldn't even know who coined the term. Uh, but I think you can observe it anywhere and you can touch it anywhere. So it's not uh, not something about that somebody owns as a, as a as an idea. But somebody is very much a philosopher of um, petrification of matter and of hardness. And that's why I want to go exactly out of our discipline because I think we should not only take uh, um, theories from uh, social sciences uh, or philosophy, we should also look to the natural sciences for the ideas, how we create knowledge, how we think about uh, our, um, our subjects and what we observe. And he, um, as you will know, Newton mechanics, he, he for, uh, was very much observing how matter behaves on Earth in, in, in a very a practical way which, which we can uh, observe uh, every day in, in which ca in the categories in which we think. And uh, there is, um, I, but I like very much how he, he speaks about matter because he, sp he speaks about, I find it difficult to read here, yeah. it seems probably yeah. to, probable to me that God in the beginning formed matter in his solid massive hard, impenetrable, movable particles. And he goes on never to wear and break. And in the end, again, God in creation. And you see, this is not something very neutral and natural science. This is about, <laughs> it's maybe not about Christianity, but it's about the one God and the, the, the one truth uh, and the core of the matter. But you also can see already that that is not the, the world we are living in anymore. There is, we have bro broken this, what is God for him. Um, and I'll be coming back to that. Uh, another way to uh, see very much how petrification uh, governs science or um, academic knowledge is if you look at the table of the elements there, they are very much in drawers and very much of the sciences function like that, but they put things in drawers. Linné did that for the animals or he did that for the plants. And so very many of our sciences have gone or is, are still in a, in a stage where you just uh, classify. And we also do that in archaeology a lot when we look at the objects. Well, what is petrification? <coughs> if some of you know what I but I, I try to get you in the mood, then you can kind of start observing that with your own senses. So I've, I've picked now uh, four very different aspects of our um, surrounding, uh, and I, I start kind of with the liquid stage, with the more liquid stage. Has anybody an idea of what very general topics I want to address in these four pictures. Not the ones who know already. <laughs> <laughs> it seems the 
<laughs> Anybody an idea to a guesswork? What the what is what is the left upwards corner here that is uh, landscape? Landscape exactly. What are we talking here about? Talking <laughs> communication would be the thing. Then this is an easy one. Yeah, architecture, how people live, how they live, yeah. And then the left one is a bit more difficult. That is real nature, perhaps. It's nature. elements. Yeah, but it's about the light there, and then about the, the sick. About visibility. No, I was, I was too difficult. I'm speaking about time and how we divide time. So a very, very uh, general thing. And how can we petrify all these things? I've tried to do that in the next picture. So a petrified lan uh, landscape, that is something I very much encounter when I go to Britain. Everything is divided up uh, with these stone walls and you're not allowed to go in any of the fields. And if you go into houses in Britain, for example, you feel that they have so many more doors than they always close. So for example, for a German, this is a very uh, uh, striking thing. Uh, but communication, you see, I was, I was uh, on, on the picture before, we had the, the woman talking to the, to the group of children, so exchanging orally. Um, probably not um, not a very free. Maybe a, a story that repeats itself that she she tells every year. But still, it's very different from a communication that has has kind of uh, is written down. It's written down in a very specific way. It's also you see that the, the letters must be in a certain height. So it's very very much regulated how that. And so it, it's also. Here that it is always repeated in the same way, even if it's if it's spoken, um, and it must have a certain way how it how this look looks like. Then um, petrification of habitation is also uh, quite striking. This house can't be moved as quickly as the paint we saw in the in the beginning, and also the the road here has a hard surface, and there is these limitations, uh, so so that there. Are, uh, really much more borders in the landscape itself and for for time here uh, our our life and our daily life is now very much regulated by that's why we are wearing these ones all the time this is why we have these calendars all the time time is divided up so and in the picture before time was when the sun rose because you need the light to do something so that doesn't play any role really for us today anymore. Uh, so we can see petrifying elements in our daily life. And uh, but this is not the end. If you go further, you see that there is a very strong liquefying element again. Liquefaction takes place when we have a timetable of trains or of planes. Uh, but they don't fly to that. So that is a kind of a, a theoretical petrification. There is a timetable, but it, is, it, it does not work. It is not uh, really implemented. And we must always look for that because we encounter such situations very often when we have written sources and we deduct from them what's, what was really happening. So that is not the same what is uh, happening. We have communication. It has is is still in the written form, but it's very fluid. It's it's, it's getting lost all the time. It's so so much that uh, probably we won't uh, <coughs> very much of this uh, will stay. And also uh, here, the landscape very quickly can get um, reshaped or yeah um, by nature again. Um, and whether it. This is something that uh, a bomb has done, or in this case, uh, the, the earthquake in Italy. Uh, this is um, something that destroys the structures we keep for granted, and we have built to be eternal, but they are not. So I, I try to see this liquid and solid as uh, oppositions. They are certainly not the only way you can divide up the world, but. Uh, if, if you want to uh, address a process as is it a liquefaction or is it a petrification, you can kind of apply these um, adjectives and you can ask 
is this object from organic material or is it inorganic or is it uh, is it the first in the first instance you do they use organic material and then they use inorganic material so which direction is the process going um, but it also uh, comes in is this object is it getting more and more specific is it just for this purpose or can it be used for several purposes while liquefaction would be if object become more multifunctional. Um, I've been setting these up and I'm not absolutely sure about everything so that I, I, I sometimes have a, a question mark because I'm not, not quite sure whether I'm, I'm right in my feeling that uh, solid is more the visual and com or a liquid is more the sound that is the, the qualities of the sound can be <laughs> more liquidification or um, maybe I, I should make a, if, if you think about sound, um, Alexander said if, if there's music uh, to our session it should be hard rock. <laughs> 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 it would be perfect. Liquidification <laughs> underlined with hard rock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or the music should be foreseeable, it should be repetitive, it should have a very strong bass. So that would be liquidification. Why? Liquefaction is if something, if, if a noise comes and you don't know the modern music and what are what are they going to play? Well, it's, it's it, it happens. Everything happens new, and you can't anticipate. That is what what I'm, I'm talking about. Um, let's not stick with this because I have many more examples to to show show that to you. So, what would be um, petrification cycle would be. This is the very easiest uh, vessel we can use to drink, and it disappears. So that probably that is the very <coughs> first. Either you drink with your mouth as the animals, or you take it with your hands. That is the first vessel we use. Then um, it becomes we, we we observe that there's a lot of uh, organic material in history. Of course, these are not as old as I, the one objects I have in mind when I kind of go up the, the ladder of evolution, maybe. Uh, but then you see this very specific cup and that is certainly more heavy and very much more specific and can be just used for this drink. Um, and if you want to have a more a petrification, then you kind of repeat the same cup over and over again and produce the same coffee. And then you produce the same coffee at the same time uh, every day so that that you so you can enhance petrification. There is the opposite. What is happening today? It does, it that be what we use in the in the um, breaks now all the time, which is very logical because the conference is not something that is here every day. If we if we were working here, we might have uh, other cups. But this is the liquefaction of a conference or of the modern times of, of McDonald's, whatever. And this is a um, a joke by an artist. She just made a cup from felt to comment somehow on this uh, uh, material development or, or our, of our thinking um, how what our, from what material things should be. And this this very artist she, that is her portrait that is a petrification of herself. So he just <laughs> that's just a, a, a X-ray of from from her from her side. So she. Here she did a liquefaction of a cup, and here is a petrification of her um, idea of a photograph. Another example would be um, would I said petrification? We very much think of the turn in architecture from wood to stone, uh, but you can also wood itself is already a petrification of plant material. It's the hardest plant material you, you can get. So for the people uh, who don't classify so much organic and inorganic, uh, already a tree trunk can be something very heavy, very durable. Uh, that's, uh, I'm thinking about um, the, <coughs> the, the drawing from wood and, uh, and the stone circles, uh, which my, my colleague in, uh, Chris Fowler in, in Newcastle presented to us. Um, so that is already something like petrification. Also, wood can petrify. And I'd, I'd like to show you. Um, maybe one of the, some of the first buildings were just 
built in between standing trees, so we must not look for post holes, we must look for the tree. How can we look for the tree? And how can we identify that people might have had a house there, but it's possible that this uh, ethnology has shown uh, that it's very uh, common. But then our first houses are usually also the tree trunk, and it's not it's still round and it's still vertical so it's just kind of taking a tree from there to here and plant it anew in the earth um, if you if if they they cut the, the sides of the tree is already getting more stone like um, if they use the tree not in a vertical way but in a horizontal way it's again being more like a stone and then you get the transformation in uh, uh, in um, architecture, that uh, you have this uh, horizontal beam sitting on stone, and then the last stage here would be really the building from stone. But inside a building from stone, there's always or very often a lot of wood uh, just on the inside. The opposite process would be you can liquefy stone. Um, that is uh, the the most petrified aspect would be just of course a big big rock where or a, a natural cave uh, uh, this is already something that is uh, man-made this um, this cave here or this um, which is which is going through the, and uh, then people building their own mountains here with stone or, or from earth and stone uh, but you must always not only think of the building that is built, but you must have in your mind that there is the stone is taken from somewhere. So there is a liquefaction of in the quarry to be able to make a um, an artificial um, uh, architecture somewhere else. And uh, then this would be a very very regular masonry, which is more petrified than the one that has no mortar in between and is much more irregular and it's easier uh, to reassemble but also um, the gothic architecture would be in my mind an edification because it very much goes in the vertical and it also imitates again um, a forest actually the, the pillars and the multiple parts of them and then they go up and they have their branches and so you are a bit in a, like uh, in, a, in a forest. Okay. Yeah? If, um, I've done the exercise also for food just to give you an idea how you can uh, practice that in your in your um, research. Uh, what is what is uh, petrification of food that also uh, happens in, in history. The nomadic lifestyle of course is uh, a lot more wild animals. Uh, um, it is of animal origin and not of plant origin. Uh, you eat it rather raw. Uh, it's fresh and it's softer. Uh, and then you have irregular meals. You have can have very large portions and you have nothing for a long time. And um, it's organic. And here is unorganic. So um, the most liquid food, of course, is, is water. The most petrified food would be sugar and salt. These are completely uh, inorganic or unorganic materials. Um, so in, in, ar uh, in archaeology, you, if you, you would want to uh, classify a culture or a certain stage as more liquid or more petrified or in which direction it is going, you would have to look at these uh, different uh, um, categories uh, separately and what we found out in the in the uh, workshop we had is that these the tendency can go very different so people can start building in stone but at the same time um they they you don't find graves from this from this uh, period so people must not don't necessarily behave uh, not necessarily the whole culture petrifies uh, <laughs> Uh, all together, but different, maybe also groups of people or aspects of their life can go different directions, and that is something I, I'd like to explore more still. So, one of the most common uh, oppositions is uh, between settlement and burial, that where you should look at uh, how which direction the um, 
the development goals. To come back um, to Newton, uh, so this would be the Newton mechanics here in the in the middle, the materialistic world, that what everybody accepts as being our real world. But in physics, you know that there, if you decrease in size and uh, you let, look at the, the atom level, uh, then there uh, something uh, the, uh, at the quantum physics, then you have something like a duality, wave particle duality. So the identity <coughs> uh, of a light particle is not clear anymore. Or uh, if you go to the increase in speed, then relativity uh, theory uh, uh, kicks in. So this mechanical worldview, which is the very petrified aspects of aspect of, of science and of understanding the world, is in, in physics has already kind of quite I'd say liquid aspects or uh, additions. Uh, but we in our uh, thinking and especially also in archaeology, we, we don't adhere to that. Uh, uh, we are now that is really somebody I'm, I'm, I'm taking a lot of thoughts from, <laughs> uh, but I, I'm afraid it's not uh, available in uh, in English yet. Uh, she, she writes Natalie Knapp. She she writes about uh, this uh, us being stuck in this um, in this uh, world view uh, of Newton and not not adopting these new uh, uh, patterns. We should. Uh, we, we could actually take up um, here. Quantum physics shows that there is hardly anything more immaterial than matter, and we would actually need to go beyond these patterns and yeah, leave these walls to be able to think more uh, freely. Thank you. That was Oh, yeah.